Okay, well, I think we can start tonight by just going within. Just taking a couple nice deep breaths. And letting ourselves really turn over our whole experience to Holy Spirit. It's like we can place our whole being into his hands, into the Holy Spirit's gentle embrace. If anything is worrying us or troubling our mind, we can just let ourselves hand that over, set that down. Set it down right at the feet of Holy Spirit. You don't need to carry it anymore. Sometimes in the setting down, we're asked to witness or to see something a little bit more. And so we can be willing to be a witness helping whatever it is we're setting down to release by our willingness to see it. A willingness to look with a kind of neutral, objective viewpoint. We can actually find a real calmness in this detached, but really open-hearted way of being.
because it's not uncaring. It, it's just sort of like a question, but what does that have to do with me? And the realization that it doesn't actually touch that perfect spirit, that perfect joy. that perfect love that you are. And with this attitude, we start to know that we can look at anything, literally anything. It's love and kindness. And this pure equanimity, this pure calmness. And to know, to let ourselves really know that we aren't alone. You are not alone. Your loving friend is with you right here. right with you, always. That's how Jesus wants us to think of him a loving friend. Someone we can trust. Someone we can talk to. someone to feel joyful with. (laughs) 
is as close as our own heartbeat. And he's always, always there. We can celebrate this relationship with Jesus. This love that's always here, always there.
We can close this meditation with a prayer. A prayer for peace. A prayer to give over whatever we need to so we can know that peace. A prayer of gratitude. Thanks. Because on some level, we know the healing is already done. We never left home. Amen. That's good. We never left home. What I have in mind too is the, the steps. I think it's very beautiful to feel so at home, home in God. But if that's not there, there are steps to take. And I love the feeling of rushing towards the steps that are given. Because it is the way home. If we don't want to take the steps, it's because we're afraid of home. We're afraid of the goal. And that happens. Seemingly, that happens. That there is resistance and fear of taking steps. But right now I feel inspired by the taking of the steps. <laughs> you can say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And I love that. I love the state of mind of, of a yes, because spirit will not stop giving us the means that we need. If we have a big yes, we will get many opportunities. If we have a small yes, we will get some too. <laughs> the way I read at the meditation earlier something about if you are, if you experience faithlessness, I think, you have faithlessness, you have let an idea of bodies come in to the mind, an idea of bodies. Mm. 
And I thought that's a very high state of mind to never let any idea of bodies come in. Just being with God, being in faith. Is there anything anyone feels to explore today? We are we are taking some steps here and and that's so so many reasons to to be grateful and but that's something in my mind like and I don't know why but bring bring me so much sadness when I think about <laughs> it's it's Again, this this topic about I I need to work and I need to get a job <laughs> and because since I was in Mexico, then I heard like I work for Jesus. <laughs> I have this in my heart, but now here because all this talk about the future, like. I should help in the future after four months in Sweden. I can get a job and people start to ask me and when I, I'm going to have a job to help and his family and, and yeah, just people. <sighs> but I also have this just believe in my mind about money that I'm, I can just be helpful if I have money and then if I'm work and and then I can say hey, I, I I helped I'm supporting I'm supporting him Vanessa that is what I think you can say now <laughs> there must be some guilt in your mind some belief that you only contribute if you bring in money. Yeah. But what about being truly helpful? Do you know what that means? Yeah. You know, and when you questioned, maybe that's the opportunity to say, I am truly helpful. I am supporting in the highest way possible. And then it's also about not listening to these doubtful voices, you know. It's like, when are you going to help and support your living, you know. That, that to not listen to those doubt voices, you know, because I think there is guilt in your mind and that's why you hook, hook you get hooked on those hooks. But it feels like you are working for Jesus and that you have that true calling. And if Jesus wants you to get a job, he will send you some very clear signs. But I don't think you have felt that at all. I think your function is different there. Rest assured. And have you heard the Lion King song when they sing Have Faith? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. It's like yeah. ping pong coming at you every day. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <And the> ping pong. <laughs> yeah. Good thought, not the real thought, you know. You, 
Ja. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Ja, stick to your trust. Yeah. So you're in Sweden now? We just got a house. They have a beautiful house. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. yeah, and then, you know, the day when Jonas shared that he was upset because we want that house, but we went there. And then the woman, she just started to share a lot of sadness. And then a lot of, we felt so helpful there. And then she felt so grateful for us. But she she didn't, she didn't, um, rent the, the apartment and it was not so that beautiful and then we got a new one and then this new one there was like the guy he said oh i want two two months of the, the post and then i said okay but we don't have this money and then he, i had a call with them with him and his wife and then afterward he called me he said you know what there are many couple they want to rent our house but I felt uh, the house has to to be for you. And <laughs> <laughs> See, you are a miracle worker. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, he just, he, he also gave a discount. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, you don't have to pay two months. You can just have to pay one month." <laughs> and, and mom, mom, and then we are going uh-huh. to. Move. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and oh, oh Barrett, in the day when we went in this apartment, when we were coming back, not this one, uh, the one we are going to rent, we have rented, but the other one, and the day when we were coming back, Jonas was almost sitting in the in the bench, and then there was a bird pooped. And <laughs> really? How <laughs> much was was in her his head? His head. <laughs> I just laughed. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you share for the ones who weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and another in the call, I shared about this movie, the, the Under the Tuscan Sun, where this woman wanted to buy this house and uh, didn't look like it was going to work because the house was already going to these other people. But when she was there, um, <laughs> out of nowhere, there were birds inside the house, actually, in this movie, and, and a bird pooped on her head. And this old Italian woman said, like, that's that's good luck. That's a sign. So she basically canceled the deal with the other couple and and said, you know, this house ha- has to be for you. So that's the omen here <laughs> that apparently then played out after I shared it <laughs> in one of these Zoom calls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Life is stranger than fiction sometimes. <laughs> mm. and big hugs and blessings, Vanessa. This feels good. Yeah. You can tell people that complain, you can say, I work, but see, it's in the invisible. I work in the invisible realm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you know what? We were in the, uh, have a dinner with his parents and then one of his cousins, I don't know, she first time I said, I work with forgiveness. It was, did you hear me? You cut out a little. Yeah, in, in one of the, we have a dinner, a dinner and then one of his cousins, Jonas cousin, she asked me, and if I have a job, and then for the first time I said, I work with forgiveness. And then, but I was shaking. And then she said, well, what is the salary? And then, <laughs> and, and then I said, peace of mind. And I said, oh, okay. But I was a little bit, yes, yes, but I was shaking. Yeah, the first time I said that. That's great. <laughs> yeah. 
That's a good pay, peace of mind. <laughs> yeah. Not real wealth. <laughs> Yeah, flowing with miracles. Well, we have time here. We can go into anything. So if you're sitting with something that you would like to explore, Feel free to speak up, Anna. Hi. And then what I want, really wanted to bring up right now is um, just sort of really at a place where I am so disoriented from absolutely everything, literally everything. It's like, I feel like I, I have no foundation, but I know God is real, so I'm I'm okay. And on that basis alone, I'm okay. <laughs> but I have nothing. Like I look around, I go outside, I feel I I don't know where I am, don't know who I am. I sleep next to Kevin and I look at him and I'm like, I know you're the son of God, and I have no idea what the hell that means. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and I have confused intensity for joy. Because for most of my whole life, I was so depressed. I just looked at the world when I was little and I was like, this is so disgusting. I just want everybody to love each other. And I don't know how to do that. And I didn't realize this whole time that it was, it was me, you know, like, it's just all these things that I carried in my mind and like, and I just saw so many disgusting things in the world, like so many disgusting, horrific, like horrifying things. And then to come in a short time to the realization like that that was me, that it's me, that it's me. Yeah. This whole time, yes. It's not the it's not the true you. No, I know it's not. But why why am I seeing these things? Like why? Like I know I'm I know in my heart I'm good and everyone's good. But where did where did these horrifying things come from? Why are they there? Why do I think that I see them? Why did I think that was reality? Yeah. And I just have no basis for reality either whatsoever. But it feels like you are loosening from those horrifying things, you know, because you have this feeling like you don't know who you are. Or what you are, where you are, and those horrifying horrible things you were saying were more like in the past but they're they're seen when they are believed so there have been beliefs or there are beliefs in your mind that you know there's still some beliefs there and that's what you're working with the, the forgiveness the releasing of that perception like to face that painful stuff um, yeah. I'm just at the point where I'm wondering like how did my perception get so skewed like 
in my deepest heart, I've always remembered God. Like I remember watching the war on TV when I was like eight or nine and the Gulf Gulf War had just started. And I was sitting there watching it after that being the last horrible thing I could see. And a flash came in my head and went, this isn't the world God created. <laughs> and so from 10 until now, I've been trying to figure out how, how could I have gotten from here to there? And, and there is a grievance against God, whether I like it or not, whether I like it, I don't like the fact that there is one, but there is. <laughs> and I just feel like, <laughs> you all know the answer, so you're going to giggle at me. That's fun. <laughs> like, you're almighty and all knowing and all powerful and all everything, and you love me, period, and you don't see any wrong in me and all these beautiful things. But hey, buddy. Why am I sitting? Why do I think I'm this body sitting on a couch crying? For 40 years, I've cried. I've been crying in the freaking bathroom for 40 years. And that's the most I can remember, never mind before that. But like, you never could come up with something where mm -hmm. this didn't happen. I don't know. I love you very, very much, God. But like, we need to have a conversation about this. Like, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And the whole idea is that God it did not put you there. Because no, he did not because he's too there. nice. <laughs> he doesn't know of this. No, Great. he's there. He <laughs> he's there, and you're there. I mean. In the in in the truth, you are there loving God as much as God loves you. Continue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I love him so very, very much. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. The misinterpretation of, of who God is or what God is. It's just a misinterpretation. <laughs> Thinking that he has anything to do with it, you know. But couldn't he have stopped me from going down this road? Couldn't he have? Couldn't he have kept me from doing this to myself? I understand. I will take one hundred percent responsibility for all this. I understand the innocent perception he of. Did. A, he did. Pardon me? He did. Okay. He did prevent you from doing this, but. Okay. You believe the dream is real. That's why you don't you don't yeah. know that fully yet. You know, but why is it called a dream? Why is it called an illusion? And why can it change? You know, what is real about it if it can change? Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like the dream can literally change. Like it can literally yeah. it can literally have a shift in perception. From fear to love. That means it's what? not it's not real. It's not anything that can change is not real. The changeless is the real. And when you change from fear to love, you are you go into the changeless. Okay. I will recognize that I just need to go deeper on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's funny because yesterday I wrote, I was all freaking out all morning. I felt so tense in my mind. And then the thing that released it that is that I am resistant to accepting that my past and all past lives were just a dream. I know they were, even this one. Uh -uh. So I'm just trying to move through the resistance of. Yeah. I guess, see, and my mind goes on this caterpillar thing where I'm like, can't you keep your kid from dreaming? A crappy dream like you're god but at the same time i understand there's just something i don't understand yeah yeah, yeah. 
So who 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 is to blame for a bad dream? I don't know. That's no my one. problem. No one. You don't. You wouldn't. If you had a if you had a child that had a bad dream, would you blame them? No, because I had a child that had nightmares all the time. So the child's not to blame, but who is to blame? No one. No one's. To blame. Where do they come from? They come from nowhere. Well. You can't blame something, someone for something that, that's not true, something that didn't happen. It did come from nowhere. Okay. <laughs> okay. I realize that that's my level of understanding, and now I'll just place that on the altar, and I will understand deeper and. It will be understood. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because it cannot be understood with the intellect. With no, you know, the no. deceived mind can never understand it. But... No, no. <laughs> my understanding has far surpassed my intellect a long time ago. I thought I was <laughs> so intellectual, man. I thought I was so smart. Yeah, that that was dead a long time ago. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's proud as well as is as possible in the course with the tiny mad idea that crept yeah. in to the mind that is already one with God. And then you forgot to laugh. You forgot to see it as just a tiny mad idea. So. <laughs> 40 years of crying in the bathroom. I know. <laughs> Take it some stupid idea seriously that's not even serious. I know in my heart that's real. I'm just trying to get to that point where I accept it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all funny. Everything's funny. Okay. We, watched, we watched Dead Man Walking last night, and it was a bit intense, you know, because it's so such an mm. intense theme there with murderers. And, but the nun is so non-judgmental. She's so loving, mm. just present. She's... Yeah. It's a great movie to watch, to just feel her presence and her openness to do whatever she's asked. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> and there's the deep breath that signifies yeah. the end of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. <laughs> Thank you for letting me let that out because it's, Needed a place to let. I've been really looking forward to today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Sitting with some thoughts. Let's explore your thoughts. I just feel this love of spirit, you know, around this taking steps. Allowing to take steps. Because mm. how will we ever heal if we don't take little steps, even if it's baby steps, you know? And a little bit out of our comfort zone. But that's how we will undo all those concepts that are trapping us. I don't want to be trapped by concepts and fears and control, future thinking. Yeah, that's so boring. <laughs> and such gifts on the other side of taking steps. Mm. 
and we're safe. I mean, if we believe that God is real and God is good and God loves us, why wouldn't it be safe to take steps towards God? It's unsafe not to. Yeah, that would be scary. Be more stuck in a in a bad dream. I never really regretted. I never regretted taking steps. Even when I took them, I was very, very scared. And I, I thought, sometimes I thought it could be my death, you know, like as how scared I was. But but I was always shown that I that it was right, that I was safe. And I was given those beautiful gifts, expansion, clarity of mind, loving relationships. Of course, intensities, but but it was all for undoing and clearing. Yeah. I, I would not not do this. When I took the bigger steps, it felt like about two years, two and a half years of intensity was in, in the beginning, like real intensity. <laughs> and then it's been much smoother. And I always thought, well, it's worth it, you know, from having been eternally lost in illusion and, <laughs> and pain and Two and a half years of some confusion, it's worth it. <laughs> so I, I never regretted taking steps. So I, I love, yeah, I love joining with all of you because I know you're taking steps and I cheer you on to take more steps, take the steps that you, you know, you may feel scared of, you may feel, oh, this might be spirit, but I'm scared, you know. I encourage, yeah, to to join, to to fly, to dare to take those steps and talk about it if it's fearful or, yeah. We can have private calls if you don't want to talk in this big group. But It's safe. I keep hearing the words, it's safe. Keep thinking of there's a thing called step aerobics. I don't know. I don't know if it's still around, but when I was a kid, and like Jenny's like the step aerobics instructor, <laughs> step coach. I never did aerobics. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just these steps. You just step onto them. Step and one. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the instructor. <laughs> and step up. Step to the side. <laughs> um. Matthew? Hi. Yeah, it's, can you hear me? Yeah. It's interesting that you're saying the word safe. I think you've said it a good few times, but um, just before the gathering, we all held hands here. And after a minute of just holding Dirk's hand, I just got this feeling of pure safety. 
it was just so beautiful and i really felt it i felt the truth of it like we're so safe yeah and there's nothing to fear I really got the sense of that so yeah i just wanted to share that yeah it felt like you were blissed out in the meditation yeah yeah i felt very relaxed yeah. Thank you.